back. Huh? Hey guys, Wet Movie One back here again. I'm with Sean right now. I know that was probably, probably a little flub right there. But what's mm -hmm. up, Cool Dooter? Yes, is it cutting to me? Like yeah, it's cutting. No, it's okay. cutting to you. <laughs> okay. okay, cool, buddy. Just have to check. You never know. Yeah, guys, welcome back to another Tons of Fun video podcast here on the Wet Movie One channel. Next week, hopefully, we don't know yet. It should be over on uh, Sean's channel, Cool Duders One, for you guys who watch our live shows. And uh, for you guys who are not watching it live, make sure you guys check, you know, hit, hit that like button and everything. But uh, Sean, what you been up to the last couple days, man? Not much, just finishing up the new update. You know, like, it took a long time to get everything done. Oh, was, I know. It was kind of like one of those ones that, like, I didn't know, you know, if I was going to get I didn't know if I was going to get everything watched for this one. Oh, I know. It's got kind of like nerve wracking, and even like still, Mandela's in the pile, and a couple of them are still in the pile, and they're not even done yet. Yeah. That's the pain. That's the biggest pain is like when you get done, and then you still have stuff in the pile to have for the next one, and you're like, Ah, Freddy, I'm not even caught up yet. Yeah. Oh, I know. And you're you're in the middle right now of a move, and by next month, you're gonna be in a whole new place, yeah. all squeeze all squeezed in. It's like it's gonna be an interesting experience. Oh, I know, huh? Like, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, because we were talking about it, like, you have a lot of little shelves. All those yeah. little shelves are going to have to be all big shelves. Mm-hmm. And I, I, don't know how, I don't know how it's all going to work yet. I'll probably get into it in, like, a, a different video about, you know, what's going on and what the place looks like and all that kind of stuff down in the next couple of weeks or something. Are we going to talk about that damn amplifier or are we going to leave that for another time? <laughs> Some other time. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll leave that for another time. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. but uh, there is one thing. There's a couple things I have on topic here that I want to talk about. One of them is in the title of this video: the Human Centipede Three final sequence uh, was re not released yet, but they had, they released a couple of photos or a photo of the film where you see the actual doctor from the first film and that little guy. Uh, we we man talked to him in the video. Yeah, yeah, that we did an interview with. Uh, but together, it looks like they're working together in this Human Centipede Three movie from the picture that I saw. If anybody like hasn't seen the second one, like don't listen or whatever. But it's um, cause like I think the second one was supposed to kind of be like a dream or something. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So maybe in real life they work together. You know what I mean? Maybe like the second one he just kind of imagined it, and they kind of connect or something. I don't know what they're gonna do, or if it's gonna all be like a dream. Maybe because I think he's supposed to be like a southern kind of. Remember he was telling us he's gonna have like a Texas accent. Because mm -hmm. in, in this picture that's been that was released on the internet earlier this week, you see you see both of them looking like they're walking down like a, like a prison like a prison line with all these hands you know coming up out of like the, the prison bars. It's like it looks kind of cool, and I really I'm really kind of interested in seeing how this uh, third installment of Human Centipede is gonna uh, work out. And you know, Tiny Lister's in it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's in it. Eric Roberts is in it. Um, Brie Olsen is in it. There's a lot of weird people in it. No, like, I, I wonder how they're going to use them. If they're going to like put Eric Roberts through someone's hole, you know what I mean? Like, are they gonna, is he going to be the end? Yeah, like the same thing with with Tiny Lister, Zeus from you know uh, WWE or WWF back in the day. But uh, is I just wonder what what he's going to do and how he's going to fit in this little uh, trilogy of movies here. Cause you know he's like you know he's like the big guy that's always like ah and like all everything that he does. How how is he? What is it, what are they gonna do with him in this? Like make him the ass end of the human centipede? I mean it's probably gonna be like maybe those two go nuts or they're like crazy and they like lock down the prison and tie everyone's all the prisoners' asses and mouths together. I guess that's what they're gonna do. Oh Jesus Christ! I mean I, I, I mean I can't think of what else they're gonna do. How else they're gonna have that huge ass centipede that they want to have? Cause isn't, it, isn't it supposed to be like a hundred people, or a hundred centipede or something? Oh, I know, and, and we, you and me were like, probably could have done it, but it was like, I couldn't get on my knees like that the whole time. When you're a fat guy, being on your knees against someone's hole like that, I don't think we could have done it. No, I know, because I think they were holding auditions, or like people can come by and be, be a part of the film if you want I, to I think they were like desperate to get people. Remember we, like the, we had like the paper stuff, and it was like, or if you want to come, but it's going to be in the hot heat and stuff, I'm like, eh, I mm -hmm. don't know, buddy. Maybe oh, the end of us. No, but oh, I, 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 I kind of enjoy these uh, Human Centipede movies. I, I'm, I'm not going to say it's a fun one or anything, because I was watching part two once uh, out here, and then my sister comes walking in going, Ew, Brendan, what are you doing? What are you watching? And it was like the whole, 
that whole thing with the baby, you know, the thing with the baby in the movie. And she's like, Jesus Christ, Brendan, what is this? Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I want to leave us questions and stuff. We ha we're trying to use this one where you can look at them through the video itself. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we see everyone's question this way, but we'll just have to see. Yeah, because uh, someone named Chris is asking me how I'm doing. I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for asking, Chris. <laughs> when are you going to start boxing everything up, Brennan? That's the real question. No, I, I know. I, I have things going. I, I already bought some uh, you know, containers from Walmart to pack up their clerk's toys. I was, was going to say what you could do is, since you know it's not going to matter where you live anymore soon, you could always do like a, a live broadcast when you're packing everything up and like leave it for like two or three hours straight. Just show the whole thing, so you're in the back going, ah, buddy, ah. and then like you can say, if anyone, if and you could tell your address and say, if I drop dead, call nine one one and send them to my house. Oh yeah, like I, you guys have a heart attack, like lifting up boxes, taking them down steps and shit. Yeah, have, a, have a stroke right on live stream. That's nice. Yeah, stuff. that's the thing though. It could, it could happen though, and it could keep yeah. going. And even the ambulance people were like moving your body out because I think it would just keep going until somebody turns your computer off. <laughs> and then it just, and it just publishes. And I'm like, oh. Oh no, because oh, I, th I th what would happen? Because I think these things, these uh, live shows, can go for eight hours. So I guess after eight hours, it would just, you know, cut, cut off automatically or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a, a thing here saying uh, the hundredth centipede, the ninth wonder of the world. <laughs> mm-hmm. I wonder how they're gonna do that. Like how, if they got like a hundred extras or whatever they're gonna, ho however they did it. How how do you film that? A hundred centipede thing, because it's not gonna be like a you know a special effect or CG or anything. I don't know. Yeah, but also this week was uh, the release of the new Sin City 2 trailer, and uh, I, I didn't look at that yet for some reason. Like I think Juno Temple's in it, but I, I don't know why I didn't look at it yet. I I kind of liked the first one, not a, not like a super fan of it. I just sort of like it because I like Robert Rodriguez's stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, this the second trailer looks like it could be kind of interesting. Like Gabriel said. Because, I, I, like I said, I'm not a super fan. But Gabriel said it's probably like a, a prequel or something, but I'm not quite sure to take his advice you know, to heart when it comes to that movie and stuff. No, I don't, I don't even... Remember, is that one guy going to be in it, you know, that How to Lose a Guy in 20... What is that one movie, you know? How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days? Was that him or the one where he was trying not to have sex for 30 days or something? You remember, he was in the first movie, and like now no one really sees him anything anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like there's a lot of people in the first Sin City that you don't see anymore. So I'm wondering if they're going to be in it. You oh, know, like kind of they were kind of like big in 2000 or something. Right. Um, I'm I'm not quite sure, but I, I do like Robert Rodriguez's film style. But uh, it looks like Bruce Willis and some of the other cast members, like I believe Jessica Alba's back, uh, playing the same characters they were playing in the first one. But uh, I, I'm I'm kind of interested in seeing this in seeing this one. It might be one of those ones I probably get on Blu-ray instead of seeing it in the theater kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a, we have a question here saying, uh, "Have you seen any of the Best Picture nomin or nominees? If so, which ones have you seen, and and which ones your favorites?" Um, I think I saw most of them. I saw Nebraska. I saw Twelve Years a Slave. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Gravity, um, American Hustle. I think that's the only one I did. That's the only one I didn't see was that one, American Hustle. Mm-hmm. I I don't know, like. I feel like some of these movies that I discover that are weird ones I've liked better lately. Like this, so this just weird stuff like that movie In Fear I really liked, and I don't mm. know. I, you and me like kind of like B grade. I like I take uh, Newcomb High over those movies. <laughs> no, no, but but when it when it comes to like the best picture of the year, Twelve Years a Slave. I, I want to be honest with I want to be honest with you guys with this one. Um, it's not a bad movie by any means, but there there was so much other better movies that came out this year. That uh, should have won the Oscar, you know. I think the only I think the only reason they got they won the Oscar this year is because of you know the st the stuff that was happening in the movie, like the the whole storyline and everything. You know, it's it's kind of hard it's kind of hard not to give a movie that's dealing with that kind of subject. You know, it's kind of hard not to give them the Oscar. You know what I mean? You can't you, oh, you can't you, you can't snub a movie like that because then then it'll make everybody kind of look bad. You know, oh, like I, I, even I, even Ellen made a joke about that. Was like you know you, you know if you if you do that it's gonna look pretty bad. If, the thing is though, if you're judging it on movie though, it was it wasn't. It wasn't put together very well. Like the beginning of it really threw me off because it was like you know showing what happened and then showing how he used to be. It was like it was like going back and forth and like twisting stuff around right at the beginning of the film. So right when I started it, I was going, what the hell is going on? Like you and me would probably rather watch Life again. 
than yes. to watch that again. Like, I like Life. Life was a really good movie that was like a sad movie, and I don't know, it had some... Jingling, 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 jingling. Bernie Max is shit in that movie. Like, I don't know why that movie doesn't get a little bit more attention. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those ones that just doesn't... People don't really talk about it much. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know. I, I, liked, I always liked that one. But don't, don't get me wrong. 12 Years a Slave, I enjoyed it. The storyline of the film was 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 amazing you know cuz it was based on a person that was really a, that really got kidnapped that was born was born a free man that got kidnapped put into slavery and then you know his, this is his story that from the the actual guy that happened to and i i found that to be more interesting than the actual film you know how the movie actually came out but mm-hmm. uh, i don't know i really think like wolf of wall street or like gravity should have won best picture this year on like a filmmaking standpoint you know what i mean mhm Oh, I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know, buddy. But well, I we, think the Academy Awards kind of happened, so I think we should probably move on. You know what I mean, buddy? Oh, no, no. I just wanted to talk about that because we had a question there. No, but, uh, I it says, uh, it says, next month, No Holds Bar is coming to Blu-ray. Yes, yes, I know. I, I love No Holds Bar. It's it's like, it's, it's one of those ones, that movies I love that are so bad, it's good kind of thing. I cannot mm-hmm. wait to see it, see it on Blu-ray. We should ask, too, if people think we should want, you know, want to see us get, like, um, you know, like some guests and stuff. Try and get. I mean, we had David Sterling, but if they want us to try and like mm-hmm. pursue the idea of getting like some actors and some directors and stuff. Like, if they have mm-hmm. suggestions or anything like that, because we're thinking about doing that. No, I'm sure. I'm sure we will do that in the future. Try and shake things up, but we should talk, I guess, about you want to talk about the things that came out this weekend, the theaters, and there weren't many. No, it wasn't. Go ahead. It was just 300, Mr. Peabody, uh, and yeah, the grand. And the Grand Budapest Hotel is, is you know, not playing anywhere. I only played in four theaters so far. Hopefully, it comes out more places soon. Yeah, I, I didn't see any of the new movies that came out this week. I actually saw uh, the Lego movie the other day with Gabriel, which I made a little short out-and-about video with, which I'll put up online in the next uh, day or two or so. But I actually kind of liked the Lego movie. It was, it was more enjoyable than I actually thought it was going to be. No, I liked it. Now, the 300 one, I, I didn't like the first 300 movie very much. I don't... Wasn't yeah, really my I, wasn't my kind of movie. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan. I like the way the first one looks, like the whole the way they shot it and everything like that. But movies like that are not like my, my thing, like Ben Hur and Spartacus. Like movies that take like take place in that kind of time period are not my not my cup of tea. I'm not saying they're bad. I just can't get into them. Like I I don't mind movies in certain time periods though. Like I like during you know the when Ravnus took place. You know like the 1800s. Mm-hmm. And so that, those that was, kind of time. But that's a little different, though. Like, you know, you don't see, like, people in, like, those... You know, it's a, it's a little different. Ravenous was, like, just... I don't know. That's why I didn't... Like, that's the one thing I didn't love about Army of Darkness as much was, like, just the like some of the looks and stuff. Like, I don't... Like, I, like you're like, in the same way. I don't like that time period very much. Yeah, and we have a, we have a question here, which is a topic me and you wanted to uh, talk about on here. Uh, it says, hey, Sean, have you seen... Uh, what, do you, what do you think about the... The Return to Nukem High, put out by Trauma Entertainment. I, I, I told you, I, I really love the thing. Like, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the second half, and, like, because it kind of stops, and you're like, damn it, I want to see what happens. Exactly. Like, I, I, I've been a big fan of Trauma uh, movies for a while. I'm sorry, like, the camera's, like, showing it all backwards and stuff, but ever since I was a kid, and uh, ever since I found out that The Return to Nukem High was actually being made, I was getting all really excited about it. Like, I'll, I'll talk more about this in my update in the next uh, next weekend or so. But I, I did I did really really super in, enjoy this thing here. And uh, if you when you guys see it out there, definitely give this a pick up and support Trauma any way you can. But uh, no, like no, because like I want I definitely want to see him get to do more stuff with Anchor Bay and stuff. You know what I mean? Because I I'm sure if these do well, we're gonna they're gonna definitely get to do more stuff. I I would think. Yeah, but if you're a real uh, you know, film fan. Every 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 true film fan should know Trauma Entertainment. If you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I know. I yeah. Know and for you guys in the comments right now that are watching this live, let us know down there what is your favorite trauma movie of all time. If you guys have some like Toxic Avenger, Sergeant Kabuki Man, NYPD, Butt Crack, any anything. Just let well, us know. I, I, I was saying to you, I think Terra Firma is my favorite. I kind of feel like. Terra Firma is one of those things that really made me like like the idea of being in movies. Like I feel like that was like one of the first things that really made me kind of like like the idea of it. And I don't know why it was just like 
I like movies about making movies. You know what I mean? Like that one to me seemed it was just a real fun, the whole the whole vibe to it. Yeah, the, the same thing with me when it comes to trauma. That's what really one of the one of the main things that really got me into loving movies even more than I did at the time. Like watching all the Love You Cans when uh, Trauma and uh, Lloyd Kaufman go to the Cannes Film Festival and try to promote themselves in their movies mm -hmm. and uh, make your own damn movie DVD box set, promote, you know, uh, produce your own damn movie box set when Lloyd Kaufman goes to like different, you know, movie sets and like, you know, just shows you like his own video blogs of how he makes movies and how he acts in them. And I just love Trauma, man. I've always have. No, we have to try and get Lloyd on here. If, you know, it would be kind of cool to talk about the making of the movie or something. So we have to try and you know set that up or something. Yeah, man. Because me and you are, have been big supporters of trauma for a while. I think we even made videos of like our you know trauma collections or our top trauma movies. Or we should probably do that sooner or later, mm -hmm. just to like you know show, show our support for trauma in general. I think you said too that you think that the Blu-ray of Class of Newcomb High went out of print. So if you see that, everybody should get it. Like, yeah, no, I, that's what I saw on Amazon. Like, it, Amazon doesn't have it for sale anymore. Like, it's like third-party sellers. So, like, get up on that if you guys see it for a decent price. Do you think they may they might still have it at Fry's? Because remember how Fry's had like a sale on a lot of those mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. When it, when it comes to trauma movies that came out to Blu-ray, we got new, you know, Class of Newcomb High, Tromeo and Juliet, and uh, Poultrygeist. Yeah, Pol Poultrygeist, Night of the and Chicken. Father's Day. Day. Yeah, but the the big one that started it all for trauma, the Toxic Avenger, is not on Blu-ray yet. I know it's coming, but mm -hmm. I just don't know why that wasn't the first one that came out. You know? Yeah, it could have been know. like right rights or something. You never know, like with that. Yeah. But I want. I really though, I'm looking forward though. You know, like I said, to see the second part, and, see, and I I have a feeling too down the line, Anchor Bay is gonna probably cut them. You know, put them both discs in a set. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I kind of feel because remember how they did that with Spin on Your Grave one and two, and a lot of their titles down the line. But mm -hmm. I think people should get these single ones because Anchor Bay might like not put the features. No, I know. You know, I mean, that's that, the one thing. That's what I like about this uh, Return of Newcomb High Blu-ray. Cool, you get the cool green case and everything, but you do get a lot of uh, special features on here, like commentary tracks and behind-the-scenes footage is, of stuff, and you get like so, there's even a lot of people that we know. That are in this movie, like that we've seen at conventions, that we know online. Like the one know, guy, the, the one guy you talked to, on um, the interview with the nerds that we mm -hmm. were friends with, the guy he was in it. Like, like um, doing all this thing, like scratching himself and things. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, there, there was a lot of people, like some people that I knew from conventions in Bombshell. Jersey. The Bet Bombshell, my friend Bet Bombshell was the principal. Uh, you know, Mr. Rappaport mm -hmm. is in it, actually saying some lines from uh, Home Alone. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know, but guys, definitely support Trauma. It, they're just an absolute uh, fun company. They, they make fun movies. They know, you know, you, you watch the movies, you don't take them too seriously. You just have you just have fun with them. Because in this movie, they talk about chicken rape. Come mm. on now. No, no, no. No, no, <laughs> no duck. No, not chicken rape. Duck, duck rape. rape. Duck rape, yeah. sorry. Chicken rape, duck rape, whatever. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't, mix, don't mix those up. No, but I know how to say trauma, though. Okay. Um, no, I know. <laughs> but there's another topic I wanted to bring up that I saw in a news article earlier. That Pee Wee Herman's bike from Pee Wee's Big Adventure sold on eBay for $36,000. What do you that's, think about all this? That's actually a little lower than you would think. Because it was, was it the actual screen used one? Yeah, it looks like it. Because some of those kind of things can go for like a hundred thousand, like the Back to the Future, and so I, it's actually not as high as I would have thought it would. If it was the no. actual one. No, I know, but also the person that that had it that sold it said he bought it from like a, some sort of auction for ten thousand dollars back, like, I don't know, like ten years ago. But then he made thirty six thousand off it. Man, like I wish I. I got... Like you know, if you, when you got that money from an unknown person, or you're, you know, you could have bought the damn bike at that auction. Oh, then I would sit on it and then I'll break it, and there, there goes. No, the I, no, I know. There goes Wouldn't it be amazing though to actually like have that bike? Like that would be, uh, to me, that would be a really cool thing to have. No, I know. I always like the look of that thing, and Pee Wee, Pee -wee stuff has always been something I've always kind of loved. I, I, I know the TV show back in the day. I think I liked a lot more when I was uh, when I was younger. But then the movies are always been kind of cool. Well, if you you know you got some of that California medical marijuana, I think you'd like it more now though. 
Oh, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, although we haven't done that, but one of these days we will. Whenever, whenever it's fully legal and it's like everyone does, then we'll do it in some out and about videos. Right. <laughs> yeah, then we're just like, hey, Brady, go to DVD Blu-ray shopping. Right. It'll be really and funny, you, funny if that happens one day. You never know. Yeah, and have, I'm not, you know how you were talking about uh, the Back to the Future car? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw it earlier this week or a week or so ago that they made a video with Christopher Lloyd and talking about hoverboards and how they're going to be real now, even though no, I saw that. even though I they're know. even though they're fake and there's like Tony Hawk there with like you know they're all like using strings and things like that. But just watching it made me feel like a kid, like oh man, only if this was real, you know that hoverboard video. I, I don't know. No, oh, I know. And, and someone's said, "What do you think about people under the stairs?" We should say Rose from People Under the Stairs is right now in Jose's movie. Yeah, Jose Prendez's new movie, Divine Tragedies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Every time I hear that name, though, I think about, like, Divine. You know what I mean? Like, from, you know... Like, Hairspray you know, and stuff. Yeah, so I keep thinking. Like, it almost like it's like the sad death of Divine or something. Mm-hmm. Like, right now, is. like, right now, right before I started filming the show with you, I was watching the Hairspray Blu-ray. Um, I bought, like, uh, the last black... The last, um, you know, Hoarding Up video or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, what else was we going to say... We should talk about the stuff that comes out. Yeah, you know, the digital week. bits. The digital bits. movies, side. yeah. The one that comes out, you know, Inside Lewin Davis, but I call it Inside Lewin, Lewin's Anus. I don't know about that one. Yeah. Like, I don't know. For some reason, like, I do not feel excited about that one. Like, I, 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 I kind of want to see The Book Thief that's uh, going to be released next week. No, that's that's a really good one. Like, I really like that a lot, The Book Thief. Yeah. And then Out of the Furnace was actually pretty good, too. And you just watched Homefront. What yes, do you think of that? Um, I'll be talking about it in my next update. I, I kind of enjoyed it for what it was. It wasn't an amazing film by any means, but just like a, a one-time watch kind of thing was uh, – it was enjoyable for that. Jim Franco you know, plays like a, a creepy bad guy in that one. And, you know, the one that, you know, I have to be getting is Barbie and the Pearl Princess. Oh, of course. You probably got to get like the special edition Blu-ray of that one, huh? And there's one that comes out for Jose. I know he's going to want Bubble Guppies, Animals Everywhere. Oh, Jesus. And, and Veggie Tales. You remember you told me told me how much he gets inspiration for his yeah. movies from the Veggie Tales? And it's yeah, Veggies and this, in Space. And there's this other one that comes out uh, next week that I, I really want to get. It's the Dennis the Menace Volume 1 with 23 episodes of the original cartoon series that I remember watching as a kid. I can't mm -hmm. wait to like, relive my childhood watching that. No, I, I forget. How's the theme song go to that? <sighs> don't I'm I'm so dude I don't even know anymore. I'm trying to remember. I don't. Damn it, I don't remember. But the other one that comes out, I was telling you, you should watch. In fear. In fear. I really really like that. And if, if you like that movie, Dead End, mm -hmm. I think people would like it. And we also get that Enemies Closer, starring uh, John Claude Van Damme, and that one guy from American Werewolf in Paris, which was actually kind of a really fun like action flick. I I, I enjoyed that one a lot. What about Abno the Invisible Dog? Never seen it. I, I, I watched it. It was all right. Oh, yeah? And the, and the Hungover Games. Mm. You know, it's, I thought it was funny. And um, Big Patch. History comes out on Blu-ray uh, this week. Mm-hmm. And the Flintstone Kids, you know, yabba-dab, yabba-dab, yabba-dabba. We mm. are the Flintstone Kids. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Dirty, Dirty Jobs comes out. I think this is like Dirty Jobs on, Down Under or something. Yeah, it's about, it's, you know, what he does there. It's down under, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he remind you of Ernest? Like, every time I see him... Oh, I know. Like, if, if they ever made another Ernest movie, like, they had to remake it, he would be the guy to do it. No, and I think if you told him that, he'd probably punch you square in the nose and break it. Yeah, what's that guy's name again? Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe, yeah. That, that guy should be Ernest in the next Ernest movie, if there is one. And Dark House comes out... And we get some uh, movie called Dogs from 1976 for Mastered on Blu-ray, which I think I remember, but I'm not sure. That that company pisses me off, though. Their prices are too damn high. It's $27.99 for that. It's like, fuck. Oh, I know. You know what I mean? Like, I want it, but I only I would want it for, like, $20 at the most. You know what I mean? Like, don't you yeah. hate some of these companies that charge, like insane prices for some of this stuff. I, th I think I think the reason why some of these companies they charge like twenty six ninety nine or thirty bucks for their movies is because they're not big. They're not like mainstream titles like you know like Thor is like Thor. This one should have been like fifteen dollars because this one's mm -hmm. everywhere and this you know there's overabundance of this everywhere. But when it when it comes to movies like this, 
I can I, I sort of understand why they charge a little bit more for it because seriously, like who who really knows to go out there and get it? You know? Oh, I know. They, they need to make the money they can, even though that movie's not great. But you know. No, that's that's true, buddy. Yeah. No, like I, that dog's one I might have to get, but it's like damn that price. Mm -hmm. and, also, even... and also coming out is the Butterfly Effect and the Butterfly Effect 2 double pack on Blu-ray if you're a fan of those movies. The first one is, 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 is of course, a great one with Ethan Supley and uh, Ashton Kutcher and stuff. What about the Peep Show collection? <laughs> oh, uh, no thanks. <laughs> no, they, I, I got that, but I can't talk about that in an update. And that was one of those ones to review. I can't talk about porn in the video. Or, I want to talk about porn and then, like, Frozen. So you, you like watching porn? No, but... The schoolgirl report. Oh come on! Don't 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 lie! Don't lie. Okay. If I do old porn, like seventies porn, if you want to know the truth. You like old porn? Like old, like the movies. Like 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 like, like, like mature porn. No, like the movies. You know what I'm like, talking like about? Like seven seventies and up or something, Sean? Like the seven. Just forget <laughs> it, buddy. I know. I know. I'm messing around. <sighs> what a bitch, buddy. <laughs> no, but 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 to be honest, there's not that not not that much stuff coming out that's like. You know, that's to that's scream about on here. Like oh, One Direction. There's like a new One Direction DVD, some Molly Cyrus documentary. Like, come on now. But then also, the Molly Cyrus ones are not sanctioned. So they're just like made by the weird bullshit company mm -hmm. that uses like stock footage and stuff. You know, I'm talking about those weird, unauthorized ones. Yeah, but that, that's pretty much it that, that comes out uh, next this coming Tuesday on uh, DVD and Blu ray. Get the Book Thief. I can't wait to see that one. Homefront comes out, new Jason Statham movie, and uh, and in fear, Dennis the Menace. That's all. That's always the only ones that are like worth mentioning in here. And that, um, I think those are pretty much it. Yeah. And someone's asked if we saw the Grand Budapest Hotel. We want to see it, but it's not playing yet. No, it's not playing anywhere near near me at all. That no. I saw. It only has you know played in four theaters. Mm-hmm. It's probably we have playing, a, playing at the ArcLight. We have a question here. It says, I have seven, 700 Blu-rays. I bet you guys have a lot more than me. It's not really a contest, but I, I haven't even counted. I don't even know how many Blu-rays I have. How about no. you, Sean? No, I don't, even, I don't even count it, but you're, maybe you can count when you put it on boxes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, no, God. No. So you're, you're going to have to like take some time away from you know the life and whatnot soon. Yeah, like, if you guys don't see me post a video for, like, a week or two, that's because that's what I'm doing. I might not have internet hooked up at the new place for, like, a week or so. I might have, like, some videos I might, like, upload in its place while I'm gone so, like, it'll pre-upload when I'm not around or something. Mm -hmm. just, so I, just so I can get set up at the new place. Like, those, the, I have, like, two out and abouts I shot with Gabriel over the last week or two. I, I might put up while I'm, while I'm moving, or I might save one for the special edition of Out and About the Movie Las Vegas if that ever comes out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you 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 gotta put a streaming version of it up on Amazon. Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, so what you should do is get it through CreateSpace, and mm. you can put up, and the people on their TV can see Gabe Slong. <laughs> That's the, really the only difference is that, and then like, and also at some point you've got to put those damn footage of us talking to Gabe and having that heart to heart. It was like thirty minutes is, long. Isn't it, isn't that up on YouTube? No, on you YouTube? you always say you're gonna put that part up, and you never do. Yeah. Like well, right when you got the you know the Wet Me Two channel, you know, which was really just to film videos of you going to Blockbuster, and then you know that that went downhill. Yeah. You know, no, no, and that also that was also the channel where if people look back, they can look back at your mental breakdown on that channel. Oh, I know. Holy shit! <laughs> when you were laying in the corner, like I can't take it, buddy. I'm sitting in the corner and losing my mind and stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh I know. And the scariest part was. You know, you haven't worked there so many years, almost a year before you said you stopped working there. <gasps> oh, I know, dude. I was there for, like, the last year working at Blockbuster. For you guys who don't know, that's where I worked at for, like, six years. No, not last six years, but, like, I worked there for six years, but I haven't been there for, like, a year or as something. As long as I've known you. Yeah. And for the last, like, maybe six months, I was walking in there every day in my pocket with my two weeks notice saying, I'm going to fucking quit. I hate mm -hmm. you guys. I'm going to fucking leave. But then I would never do it for some reason. No, oh, I know. Until, until like, I'm like, okay, all right, here. Uh, goodbye. I got to mm -hmm. go. I can't, you know, cause the, right before I found out that they were going to go, I'm like, oh, I got to get out of this. Got to get but out you of You kept here. telling me about that two weeks notice paper, and I was like, yeah. I was like Jesus. <laughs> and you never did it. <laughs> 
Did it, buddy. Yeah, yeah I did. But, uh, <laughs> towards the end, I did. But if we have a question here. I, I don't mean to be a downer here, but I have always thought this... What? I always thought this is uh, Lloyd is getting older now. So what do you, what do you think about what happens to Troma and Lord Coffin when he, if he passes away? We don't talk about stuff like that. No. Nah. No. Troma is Lloyd Coffin. You know what I mean? That's the, the thing truth. is, the thing is, Troma will always live on in our hearts. Yeah, for the movies and everything. Just like anybody who die, anybody who passes away, it's like. Especially if they're in the world of film and stuff, they're always going to be around. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. just like John Candy, he's been dead for 20 years now, but he's not really dead. You know what I mean? Like, you can see him all anytime you want in a movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that that's the thing. It's like, I don't know. They, people live on. You know what I mean? Like, the time that there isn't an ability for people to see content is when it's going to be sad. Like, you know, yeah. who knows in the future? Like, when we're all dead. Like, who knows? The future could be really peculiar. And they like don't, and they don't have movies like they do, and because everybody will have like the red camera tech. Like that's the thing. Like the red camera in twenty years from now, the phone could do video quality that the red camera does. Right. You know what I mean? Like in a little phone. That's the thing. You don't. You don't. And I think it will. I think it will get to the point where phones are like a terabyte. You know what I mean? And a little bit can hold huge memory files, and you can film like amazing p picture, and anybody can do it. And that's the problem. With indie films, is now people can make a movie on their phone. Because mm -hmm. like even now, when I, when I most of the time when I shoot my my uh, videos, not this one obviously, because I'm using my webcam. Like out and about and hoarding up, so I use my little, you know, Canon whatever it's called, PowerShot uh, little thing, and it shoots HD, and it, I think it looks pretty good for the most part. Like if you if you and me were like we're gonna make Amber Alert two, you and me could take your camera right there, and we could make that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we could just have someone sit behind us in the car when we drove. That, I mean, that's the thing that's really crazy about movies now is, like, especially found footage, you know, anybody could do found footage. And there's certain people who do video blogs, um, like, you know, somebody who left YouTube. Like, when I see his videos, you know who I'm talking about. He likes wine and stuff. But, yeah. like, when I see his videos, I almost feel like he should make a found footage horror movie because it's, like, the way things are going, it's, like, setting yourself up. You know, because, like, it starts off slow, then it kind of gets somewhere, and at the end you feel like, oh, someone's going to jump out and kidnap him or something. You know what I mean? Like, certain people's videos are like a found footage movie. Oh, I, I know what you mean, dude. It's... <sighs> like, like, when you move to the new place, because it's like you have to walk to a lot of places, like, you could film yourself walking, and, like, you could witness a murder, and then you make your found footage movie. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's, you know it's what really, I mean? Like, really, it is really easy to make a movie these days. And it's really easy, it seems, to get a movie released and put out on DVD and Blu-ray now. Like it's much easier than it used to be. People act like it's harder now. It isn't. It's much easier. There's way more companies, and there's also way more companies that handle video-on-demand services, which is you know getting it on, you know, if you have cable, the cable box, you can search for the movie, iTunes, PlayStation, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of companies that handle mm -hmm. that now. And a lot of those don't handle the DVD, so you can just go with a smaller company and get it released. Yeah. And there's well, a question here from Monica. Where oh man, it's like, Monica, have you guys ever been to WizardCon? Uh, we want to go. Uh, yeah. Have you ever been to WizardCon? I haven't. I th I think I did. Wizard yeah. Wo Wizard World. I don't I don't know if that's the same thing or not. No, me neither. No, but like there's. There was one convention in Sacramento that I kind of wish we were at to this weekend, but that's far away to get to, some kind of horror one. Isn't there a, a, a horror convention coming up at the end of this month that we're going to yeah. be try, Monster, trying to Monster go to? No, it's mainly if you can get there because of the move and stuff is the biggest problem. Yeah, and, and I'm, 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 I'm going to do my best to get there so we can like film some video stuff, but who knows? And you should say, too, about the move, too. You know, it's, you know, you're know you going with your mom and your sister and everybody. It's not like you're like going off. Like, you know what people keep on saying, like, oh, is it because of this happened or this happened? No, no. it's just you're, you're just – something's changed with someone yeah. in your house, and you have to – you know, it's not yeah. anyone else's business. But because of that, you're going to somewhere else because you need more space. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it is. You need, an, you need another room, but at the same time – there's going to be another person in the house, and that means that that's why you're going to have a problem with these movies. Yeah. So if people are, like, you know, angry that maybe that you don't show the collection like you used to. You know what I mean? Like you can yeah. now. It may be in some boxes. It may be different. Yeah, just at least yeah, for a while. Yeah, until you can figure out how to deal with it. Cause it's, and I would come and help you, but the problem is you have a cat. And mm -hmm. then I'll sneeze, and they have to go to the hospital. <laughs> 
And you got those steps. Those steps you got to go up, Brendan. Oh shit. Yeah, no, because uh, I, I made a, a little video um, of the of going to the new place, and only Sean and like one other person or something saw this video that I I, I posted. I did, I, you know, it's a, on like a private link or whatever mm-hmm. of the of, of my new place, and Sean was just like, oh shit. Like yeah, all these steps I have to get up st- to get upstairs. No, and you got the top and you're like <gasps> <gasps> for like a minute. I'm like, oh shit. Oh <laughs> like, no. Oh. <laughs> no. And the problem is like, you're not in an area too where you can get to things. So like you can't really walk anywhere except maybe this gas station. No. So it'll be interesting seeing you walking like 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 you could do your you could challenge yourself and see how far you can get. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like time it. I, I said one time you should do a video. You just put it up in low quality and you just, sh- you know, you told me you might do it, showing how long it takes to get to the mm-hmm. gas station. No, but this, the cool thing is about this new place I'm moving to, which I, I, you know, I might make a video for all you guys to see when I when I get there, is that it had the complex I'm going to be living in has five different pools and five jacuzzis and things, and it has its own like gym that the people can go that uh, live in that live in this place. Uh, to go and exercise and things like exercise bikes and treadmills and things, which you know, since I'm moving and things are changing, I might you know try to change myself a little bit too in this process. Mm-hmm. Just to try to you know like if this is going to change, hey, how if I try to change this part of my life a little bit? Mm-hmm. You know, try to maybe exercise and feel, like feel feel better. I don't know. No, I know we can't be big puns forever. No, well we can't be fat, but we just have to be healthy big puns. Yeah, like I'm not saying I feel bad. Like oh god. Uh, you know, I, I you know just like just to feel better, just like exercise a little bit more. You know what I mean, guys? No, our biggest problem is fucked up sleep schedules. Oh my Jesus, I know. That's the biggest problem. Like, like right right now, it's about eleven oh seven our time, eleven oh seven p.m. our time, and we're wide awake. We're ready to go and start today. <laughs> no, I know. We're gonna be up watching stupid stuff like I'm gonna be watching Food Court Wars on Food Network and mm-hmm. that I taped and. All kinds of stupid stuff I have taped, and oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. let's, try, let's try to answer some of these uh, questions we have down here. Someone said, have you ever been, have you ever heard of the Spooky Empire Convention? Yeah, that's one that I always wanted to kind of go to. Mm-hmm. I, I've heard about it, never been there myself, but we also have a questionnaire saying, best 90s cartoon series. I would say, I would have to say Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. That's one of the ones that just sticks out to me when when someone says best '90s cartoon series. But I don't I don't know if not, if it started in, in the late '80s or not though. It started in the '80s. Yeah. So it's kind of an '80s and '90s. Mm-hmm. Cart- but it went a lot longer than I think we watched it. You know what I mean? I think you and me kind of stopped watching it like mm-hmm. in the earlier '90s or something like that. I don't think we watched it as far as some people did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But we watched it like heavy duty in the early beginning. But you know what pisses me off about it? Like they put Lionsgate put out this, you know, turtle van set and I was like, Oh, it's seventy bucks. Oh hell no, I'm not gonna buy that for that much money. Boop, out of print, three hundred bucks now. God damn it. Mm. Like I'm just hoping they put out the complete series on D V D again. But like maybe in like a regular like, you know, D V D package instead of the, the van or something. Oh, I told you in like Europe or something they have them on Blu ray and they put them like all on like one season on one Blu ray disc. Mm. But it's not in HD, but it's, you know, like, I got all mine. But it's, like, it's probably Region 2, though, or Region B. Mm-hmm. I, we've got to get that damn Region player, and then mm-hmm. we can get stuff like we talked about from Arrow Video, because like, there's stuff that I really would like to review. Yeah, because Ar- Arrow Video is kind of like the Shout Factory, but, what, UK or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish, don't you wish, like, like whoever invented Region Codes, we could go back in time and tell them not to do that? Oh, I know. Like, I hate that. I hate the region code stuff on Blu-rays. Sometimes, like, you get the Blu-ray. It says it's good, it's region free, but then you can watch the movie, but not the special features, or just the special features and not the movie. It's like, what are you mm-hmm. doing? No, and then we see that one guy, Monster Pollution, and he's always like, these are region free, and then you put it in, and it doesn't work, or, <laughs> and then I always haggle with the guy. Like, when we go, if we go there this year, we really should like mention that, you know, show the show the stuff. Like, sometimes. We don't show as much stuff as we should there because we get overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. With like, well, oh, we should we should show those things and see and like ask people are any of these region free because that guy doesn't know. Yeah, and we have we have a question here or a comment here saying, uh, "Do you know Absolute Sublime One on YouTube?" 
I know him. I've seen his videos before. There's this one video of him I've seen when he's like holding up like by his bed and holding like a stack of Blu-rays and stuff, and he's just like humping them. He's just like dancing and like having a good old time. I'm like, <laughs> he seems like he has fun. Has fun making his stuff. He has like, I think he does like beer beer reviews now or something. Mm-hmm. Kind of like one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. Uh, what's it called? Endurance Productions. He does like beer reviews and stuff too, but. I, I you know, always like endurance production. You know, it's funny. Someone asked me, they said, hey, Sean, we met at a flea market in Florida about two years ago, and I asked you about Assault of the Sasquatch. I think I do remember that. I was When I was doing that one, remember that movie with me in the robot makeup? Mm-hmm. Like a, like a robot? Like It was that flea market that I went to, and I told you I found the Wonder Years for a dollar. You know, like the one that sells for like 120 Yeah, like the Christmas special or something? And then I told the guy, I was like, it was from Killer Robots, and I told the guy, like, you should buy that. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's only a dollar. And he's like, all right. And I, I got him like an amazing deal for it. Yeah. No, but you know? we, have, we, have an, we have a question here saying, is the Slumber Party Massacre worth 1999 on Blu-ray? I would say it is. I say the transfer is good. You get some decent special features on there if you're a fan of the film. Yes, it's it's a it's a buy for me for nineteen ninety nine. No, I definitely will. I th- I think pretty much ninety percent of the stuff Screen Factory is putting out, I really like. You know, what I mean, there's been just one or two peculiar ones that I didn't, you know, were not my kind of thing, but most of their stuff I really like. Mm-hmm. And they've got like Rabbit is coming out. You know, what I mean, which I know isn't totally the title you think of, but I'm really excited about to have that because, like I said, the old DVD is. In non-anamorphic widescreen, mm-hmm. so it's like got those crappy bars on the side too. You know, what I mean, you know, you know what I'm talking about. No, I know. I always, I always liked David Arquette's performance in that film. Like that's one of the things that made me like him a lot. That and the Scream movies is what made me a fan of him. And then like I saw, what's it called, uh, Ready to Rumble. I'm like, oh yep, yeah, I'm on the you know David Arquette Dan Reagan. Someone was asking, what's the best deal on a DVD or Blu-ray ever? Like, wasn't one of the best ones some of those deals we thought we had that we didn't? I would say the the Goonies Blu-ray box set when it was like six bucks. Yeah, that and that was a mistake too. Remember? Yeah. Then I I bought like four of them or three or four of them, and I I kept one. And then like I brought two to Best Buy, and I like, said, hey, um, I got these as gifts, and like they gave me like a, a a credit like a cart you know credit to the store, and I used it to the store for like fifty no. bucks each. Oh no, the ones the best deals that we thought we had though. Remember on Amazon there was that glitch. And oh, you were, yeah. damn it, I hate that guy. That pissed me off so bad. And, like, we were, like, the whole, all the Harry Potter movies for six bucks. We thought we were going to get them, and you, and you were, like, ordering four of them. Yeah. And then you, and you ordered, like, oh, yeah, the Twilight Zone, the complete series Blu-ray. Oh, really? Yeah, for, like, like a penny. For, yeah, for, like, <laughs> and, like, I was really thought we were going to get them. I thought, like, maybe they weren't going to figure it out. And then you made a post about it, and then everybody was ordering them like a crazy fuck. And, yeah. then, and, and then all the orders got canceled, and I was so disappointed. And it was so funny at the same time when this whole like Amazon thing happened. Um, the seller started, you know, started getting all this bad feedback from everybody that was getting their stuff canceled. And then like, then it was getting like changed from bad feedback to good feedback, and it was just like them trying to cover up all the bad feedback they were getting. I know, mm-hmm. I, don't know how, I don't know how the hell that's possible. It was obviously some kind of a glitch. You know what I mean? Like that was definitely not supposed to happen. I think something went wrong. And we have a, we have a question here from, uh, I believe it's cre- Creepy-Eyed Films. Uh, do you guys get noticed by fans uh, when you're out and about, doing out and about videos? Sometimes I do. Mm-hmm. Like, even sometimes people that work at the place, which is kind of weird. You know what I mean? Like, and it's been weird people notice me from that or from the girls gone dead a lot. Like, that was the most noticed one. Like, the people at the sub shop or the or the people at like you know Taco Bell, or like, it's always kind of it's always weird. But the most is horror conventions. Like you mm-hmm. and me, it's almost like we're the guests there. It's really it's really weird at horror conventions. That's like it's, it's, there's times, especially that one time we were there, it was like every three minutes or somebody like Rack Marie Corridor and all that like touching our shoulders and stuff. But the thing is, we're we're also easily recognizable because mm-hmm. of our sizes, our sizes and things too. But it, it it is it is really cool to to know you know to get acknowledgement out there when we're out there in public and people say something you know what I mean it doesn't happen like all the time like with Tom Cruise or anything but it's just kind of cool to be like hey you're, I like your stuff you know it kind of like makes me feel happy and like you know I don't know. It's but cool. the worst though the worst though is when 
you know, I get a message the next day and someone's like, hi, I saw you at Disney or I saw you there. And I'm like, why didn't you say something? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the worst is when people don't say something. Like I, Every time I go to Disney, I get a message the next day. I saw you at Disney. And I'm like, well, you should say something. Mm -hmm. They don't. I'm like, what? what are they? I guess maybe they're afraid I'm going to kill them or something. Maybe. There's a, a, a comment here saying... Uh, do you guys hate the Human Centipede? I really hate the mo I really hate that movie. I I I like them. I like them, but you and me, you and me are twisted, fucked up, full, uh, weird people, though. That's the thing. Jesus, what's wrong with your language, cool dude? But we are. We're fucked up. We're weird, twisted yeah. fucks, and we uh, like weird ass movies. Do Do you guys think that uh, horror is dying as a dying genre in the mainstream? I think like everything in the mainstream cinema lately is dying because all they're doing is remakes sequels, and remakes and remakes and sequels. And sequels. And shit, yeah. I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm just like, let's just let's just start watching this weird shit. You know what I mean? The w weird low budget indie stuff again. I'm starting to get more into that again because I'm kind of like tired of all the same. It's nothing creative anymore. It's just a sequel and a remake and mm, they're even. They're, and speaking, well, sorry, sorry to get off your your ramble there for a second, but uh, speaking of a remake. Steven Spielberg, I read up, is uh, thinking about remaking the best picture. I believe I forgot what year it was, but uh, West Side Story, re remaking that for now. And uh, I don't know about that. Like, I really do like the original film because I, I always loved musicals and things. But it's just kind of like, really, you have to remake that now too. <laughs> what, what is up? What is up with Hollywood and all this remakes and shit? No, it's basically because they know that. It has a guaranteed audience, you know what I mean? So it's easier to put the money up for it. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? And the movies, the only movies that these days that really, really make big money are, you know, the superhero movies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But they also have to be careful with the superhero movies because if they make a weird one, it ends up being a cringe fest that nobody likes, like the Green the Green Lantern. Oh, or is that... Or the Green Hornet, you know what I mean? Like that's what hap it can happen. Like I think I think it's Green Lantern and Green Hornet were kind of like Ugh. yeah, both of those. Like that's the problem, you know what I mean? Like you gotta like make you gotta use Spider Man. That's why they keep remaking Spider Man, and you gotta do those kind of ones. And Thor, even though I didn't think people liked the last Thor, but I think when the 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 movie came out, um, with all of them together, which mm -hmm. I didn't watch, I think when that came out though, that kind of made people go, oh, Thor's okay. Even though they didn't like the first first Thor movie, no, I like I really did like the first Thor movie. I still need to watch the second one, but I like Pat Dennings, but I don't like you know I like I don't I don't care about the Thor movies though. No, no, but I I like the superhero things, but not as much as like some people are like really diehard. But yeah, there's, there's a question here that says, uh, how did it feel working with Beetlejuice from the Howard Stern show? Well, he shot a different day, but I did get to see him at Comic Con. I sat with him for like three or four hours at the signing. And that was one of the coolest experiences of my life, just because he kept on like talking to me, going, "Oh, I know you. I've seen you every day." And like he was saying all this crazy stuff. Like that, that was what that was my favorite experience. Like sitting there between him on the left and on the right, Ron Jeremy. Right. Well, I mean, we've seen Ron Jeremy a lot, but still, it was just kind of cool to be sitting there with him. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and the other coolest Ron Jeremy was, was he was in your hotel eating all your meats. Oh, I know. Hey, when you were there shooting something, shooting something, I forgot what movie it's called. But we were shoot, you were shooting something for this, and then I was shooting something for my short film with him. It was just kind of weird. Like my like my sister, like we're at Comic Con one year. I don't know if we said this on a video before, but uh, I called my sister. Hey, I'm coming down to the hotel room to get you know to get ready. We're gonna be filming some stuff. She's like, okay. I'm like, Ron Jeremy's coming too, and she's like, <laughs> yeah, right. You know. And then I come, we come walking down the hallway. She sees Ron Jeremy and me and Sean walking down there with some cameras and shit. And her okay. and a friend are like, wait, what the hell is going on? Why is Ron Jeremy coming to our hotel room right now? Remember I'm like, I don't know. And remember when we were at that restaurant, like sitting there, and we kept on like waiting because the one's like, are you done? Are you ready for the check? Because it was really busy, and we're like, oh no, we're waiting for somebody. And she kept coming back, and I said, look, I said, sorry, we're waiting for Ron Jeremy. And yeah. she like, and she started laughing and walked away. And then like, when, right when she came back, he was just randomly sitting there eating the leftover prazuki cookie that we ordered. Mm -hmm. Like, remember, remember we we ate it, and she like, he was scraping the bottom of it, eating it, mm -hmm. off of the same spoon that I used. You know what's weird? Like something I would have never ever thought would ever have happened in my life. Like be watching movies and all this stuff. To have been in like three or four movies with Ron Jeremy, I would have never thought that would have happened, you know? 
We should mention though, they're not porn movies. They're no, 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 no. We don't. Uh, we're not in any porn movies. No, but you know, it's just, it's just kind of like it's it's kind of cool, but at the same time, it's kind of like oh, all right. Like, but me back in the day when I just when I found out what porn was, of course, he would have to be in the first scene I ever saw. But uh, <laughs> it's just it's just kind of weird that. I know, I've been in three things or four movies, you know, like whatever kind of B-movies with him. It's kind of cool. No, it's like the same thing I was telling you, like, when I've got to work with Linnea Quigley and stuff. Like, you know, watching, you know, Traveling Traveling Dead and stuff as a kid. And then, like, you know, Flash years later, me, like, doing Girls Gone Dead with her. And, like, just, like, all those kind of things you never think. It's just really weird, you know what I mean? Like, how things happen and and how I've I've got to meet all these people. And It's just, you don't, you never know, like... How life like the, is gonna go? Yeah, like the same thing with me and you. Me and you have been big fans of Troma, obviously, since we, you know, talk about the return of Nukem High in this video. If you guys are, if you guys are liking this video, please give it a thumbs up if you're watching. But, you know, since we've been big fans of Troma, we've, I've had Lloyd in my some of my short films I've done. I've been in like one of Lloyd's videos that he made along with Sean. You know, for something called Not the Government back in the day, for like, like an intro kind of thing, which mm-hmm. I thought was like the coolest thing. Ever, you know what I mean? Just to be a part of something that Lloyd actually is doing, you know? No, I know. Like that was one of those, those one of the coolest things to get to do that with him. And we've gotten to at the, at the years to be kind of kind of friends with him, which is kind of cool. Like somebody that we watched in middle school, and like mm-hmm. like I said, like you never know how your life's gonna go. You never know what's gonna happen. It's just always interesting to look back and then look at the things you've gotten to do. And you're like, whoa, I thought you, it's just kind of crazy. You know, like people you admire and look up to when you're growing up, and like, you know, since like I, with me, when I was a kid, like in high, in high school and junior high, I was kind of like a, like you know, kind of like, like the weird kid, like just please leave me alone, don't pick on me, stop messing with me, and I would go home and watch stuff like the Toxic Avenger, and like you know, live out, you know, just like the the cool things of you know how movies make you feel when you're younger and stuff back. You know what I mean? Just like you know, we've got to be friends with Michael Ray Bauer. It's like as kids, we were like obsessed with. Watching the Willies and watch Salute Your Shorts. Shorts and Wild and Crazy Kids and all the other like game shows he was on. And now he watches our videos and we're like we admire him and he likes watching us. I, like stuff like that. It's just like it, it, it's mind blowing to me. No, it, it just shows you like if you go out there and stuff and you do YouTube videos and stuff too. Like YouTube really did so much for us for like getting things to happen, you know what I mean, getting us to meet people, getting us to work with people. That's why, like, YouTube, I think, is one might be one of the best tools in the world for networking and meeting people. Yeah, and there's a question that goes along with this. How do you guys get into to be movie, to, to get into B-movies? Well, it's kind of, like, a lot of it through YouTube and then through Facebook and, like, meeting the directors, and sometimes I message people that I like, his movies that I liked, and... Mm-hmm. And then sometimes they're like, oh, I know you, I've seen your views, or, you know, I mean, sometimes it works out like that. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like, you never know. And, like, people like David Sterling that we met, who I met because he told me that he liked my videos, and mm-hmm. then we became friends. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, just you kind of, like, meet people. It's like, and then... Yeah, kind of like how I met Jose. Mm-hmm. You know, like, just, like, he's going to his house to film, you know, this thing called Very Naked Venom that he was, uh, he was making. And I became friends with him, just did stuff with him. But then now he's now he's making, you know, the Mega Shark versus Mega Shark movie. He wrote that, and now he's doing Divine Tragedies, and he did, of course, Haunting a Whaley House. Like mm-hmm. you, you never know what people are gonna be doing. You know what I mean? You just be, be kind to people and see, mm-hmm. you know, see what things happen. No, I know. And this, sometimes you know people you don't think anywhere are gonna go with, and then you're like, oh shit, look what they're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's a question here. What, what do you guys think about After Earth? I liked it, but I don't. Not many people liked it. No, it was okay. It's one of those ones. I don't know if I needed to watch again. You know, it's one of those like one watch ones to me. Mhm. And someone said, "Do you have any advice for inspiring actors for getting into movies?" I mean, I would just say, you know, use YouTube as like a kind of make kind of little shorts and make little videos of yourself kind of acting out scenes or make any any of that kind of stuff. Just like just do stuff so you have some stuff out there and yeah. go out go out there and talk to people and you know l- look for things that are going on and just like that's just just use YouTube and just do some things. And, and there's also this magazine called Backstage West. I don't know if they're if, if that's if it's over just over here or where you guys are living where it, you can like or like drama log and look up things like plays and people ask 
people asking for like people to act in this or act in you know what I mean like there, there's there's like papers that, that are dedicated to stuff like that if you're looking to be in some sort of movies to go on for auditions and things like that mm-hmm no it's true it's like and like yeah that's that's all I would say is just you know do don't be afraid to go out there and do stuff and also don't be afraid to start out with with smaller things you know what I mean like you don't get into something huge like just like that right away. Sometimes it happens, you know, just by a chance. You know, I mean, someone's like, oh, the first thing they ever did was a huge movie. But usually you have to do little things and, you know, you work up, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just like with David Sterling, like you did a smaller part in it and then you get to do a bigger thing and you do, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. you know, and then, you know, t uh, you know, who knows, the next movie or so with David Sterling, you'll be like the lead in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a real, you, you, you never know. know. You don't know but, how. But all you got, all you guys got to do, is try your best, or at least have fun with what you're doing. Don't be too nervous when you're going into things like that. Just, just do, just do your thing, and like, don't, don't stress out about what these these filmmakers are going to think about you, because seriously, you don't really know. You know, like, you might not ever see them again. Just do what you do, and you know what I mean. Just, just try to have fun with it. Is what I'm trying to say. No, because it's true. Like you said, there's some people. You know, you work with, and then you never see them again. You know what I mean? Like they don't, they don't do any more movies, or like you move or whatever. And it's just like, and also the most important thing is just like, don't even worry about anybody around you. You know, like if you're there, just block them out. You know what I mean? And like, just focus on what you're doing. Because mm -hmm. like with me, somebody like me, I used to be like one of the most shy people in the world. And like I think YouTube is really what helped me because I, if I was the way I was in middle school and high school, I would not be in one movie. I would not have done anything because I was such an awkward, shy person. And mm -hmm. I really think that YouTube is what you know helped me to open up a bit and to like me going out and filming my like I, I didn't used to show myself in the out and there were around the town videos. That was because I was nervous. You know what I mean? Like I almost like I was afraid of showing myself and I kinda hid behind Don and Murph. You know what I mean? I, 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 I know what you mean when it comes to YouTube and how it, it kinda gives us confidence in ourselves to like you know, actually get out there and maybe do more things, cause like the back then the way we were in like you know we weren't we didn't go to school together, cause he lives in San Diego, I live in California, you know, mm -hmm. out here in L.A. But we're both kind of we we're probably the same, just awkward like weird pe people that there people would, like call us names and like push us around and like talk stuff about us. But we would go home and just like watch movies and try to forget about everything that happened that day and not want to go to school that day. But now that we have YouTube. You know, we have confidence in ourselves that people come up to us and say, "Hey, we like what you're doing." And to us, it's kind of like, "What? You you like us? Oh, okay, you like us. I, oh, that's cool." Like, you know, because back then we didn't get that kind of feeling at all. You know, I know we get our, our our fair share of hate comments and shit, but you know, the good outweighs the bad on this website. No, it's like if you see, you know, give you a hate or whatever, then you you just think, "Oh, think about things you got to do and people you got to meet and things like that." Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want, someone asked if I'm going to be going to showing a fat chance. Like if they ever have anyone close out here, because I showed you that trailer, you know, it was all big actors in it, and that's oh, like yeah. getting killed in the set. That looks like a really fun movie. No, it does. What do you think? What do, what do you, Sean? Oh, someone said, what's the most shocking movie ever? Most shocking right, movie ever? Uh, I would say probably The Exorcist. No, or, what were you uh, saying before? Sorry, that's like freezing up. Mm-hmm. Are you there? I'm still here. Yeah, sorry. I, for some reason it's yeah, for some reason it's skipping a couple things you're saying. Uh, don't worry. Yeah, one, one, one of the uh, most yeah. one of the most shocking movies probably would have to be The Exorcist or and If I Die Before I Wake movie. Those ones are ones that stood out to me that made me go, whoa, shit. What about you know you didn't didn't you not like Cannibal Holocaust though? Well, that's a little different. That was just kind of like, Ew, what the hell am I watching? Mm-hmm. You know, like that was kind of like what, and yeah, like so of course, and of course we get a question that says, "Whatever happened to MJ?" How do people not know by now? You know, I don't know how they don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I've if you've noticed too, like I don't even have like any of the videos with him up, and you have to like search for them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he, uh, here's one quick little run through about the whole thing. I moved from Maryland to San Diego. You know, we did the the movie. And then we kind of tr only talked like maybe once a month, if. And I call, he never called me back. Then he ends up calling the one time saying he's getting married the day before it happens. I was very upset that he said that. He didn't invite me. I kind of got depressed and mad about it and said, I don't want to talk to you again. This is, 
this is it. And then after that, I waited about a year before I contacted him again. It was just like, you know what? You know, we don't need to have things like this. You know, life's too short. You know what I mean? Like, we don't need to have, like, this kind of stuff going on. And then when I texted him that, he te all he texted back was, it would be best if we never speak again ever. And that was it. And he's changed all his phone numbers and everything. So I don't know. People, you know, if you go to, um, you know, the – where the Safeway in uh, Maryland, Towson, go see him. You know what I mean? And, and, and tell me, tell me what he's up to because that's all I know. I don't know a fucking thing. You know what's weird? I get questions about MJ's every once in a while too because people think I know him. I only met him what I only really know him for like a day and a half or something, right? When I went to go, like hang out with you at your house when he was there, right mm -hmm. when the trip when the trip was pretty much over, and we filmed the last uh, Donner Murph episode when I killed you guys, mm -hmm. but. I don't know. He, 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 he really pissed me off. He mistreated you really bad that time, too. Like he, 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 was, he, was, he was in a weird, like, shitty little mood. Like, he could have hung out with us the last day, but he's like, fuck it, I'm not leaving the room. I'm going to stay in the room. Fuck you guys. I'm no, I, I, I was like, and you were so and this, you were so excited to see him, you know what I mean, to meet him. Like, you had never met him in person. And then, like, he was a, like an asshole the second you got there, and then he hid away and was just like, man. Mm-hmm. It was just—it was a weird experience. Yeah, I, I, there's a question here. Would you guys ever date a black girl? I have no problems, man. Actually, one girl I kind of had a crush on and was like one of my best friends at the same time in uh, was like junior high and elementary school. Her name her name was Donnie. She was like one of my best friends ever. And I yeah, dude, I, I went out with a, a, a black girl. I don't, I don't care. I don't I'm care. Not, I, I don't have a problem with any any like. No, I mean, or anything with dating anybody. It's like if, here's the thing: like if somebody wanted to date us, you know, I mean, we're open to anybody. You know, I mean, you know, we're more into women, but yeah. <laughs> but you know, except for each other. But you know, Ooh. we're more in interested in you know any yeah. woman out there or something, and they weren't like stalkers and peculiar. We'd be fine with it, right? <laughs> yeah, like we're not like gonna be like. Oh, we're not gonna go out with somebody because it's some like the race. Like we're not those kind of people. You know what I mean? I know there's people like that out there. Yeah. But that's not who we are. As long as long as you're a, a nice person, and, like you know, and you're decent and stuff, and you know what I mean, and and you have to like movies somewhat to like you know for us to even probably talk to you because if you don't know anything about movies and stuff, like hey, what's your favorite Batman movie? And they're like, what's Batman? I'm like, well, all right then, have a good day. <laughs> no, like, you know somebody who had like a collection, collection like you, you know, like a big movie collection. That's right. That's what you need. Yeah. A fellow hoarder. But the, well, someone said, what's the furthest you've ever, ever, ever traveled for a movie? And I guess, I don't know, because I've always only kind of let, went around in the U.S. So I guess like, yeah. I don't know, I guess New Orleans, but then it's Florida and it's, it's all different parts. Like mainly New Orleans, Florida, West Virginia, Connecticut, mm. New York, New Jersey, I think those are the main main places that I can think of. That you bought DVDs at? No, that I traveled to for, for mm. a movie. Because the, they said, what's the furthest? But I don't know any anywhere. Which one you would say is the furthest? Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't say that. I haven't really traveled anywhere for something like that. Or actually, anywhere in general. I think I only went to, like, what, San Francisco? I don't even think that could count. <coughs> well, you went to Vegas. Well, I don't think that counts. That's still kind of out here, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once when you, get... you guys go? When are you guys going to have another dudes' night out? Like me, like me, me and Sean together, just like doing like an out and about kind of video. It'll happen again. What about the Hollywood crew, Brandon? What the hell happened to them? I don't know. I just been kind of busy with the move and Jose's movie and this other stuff I've been working on. I don't know. It might, it might get up on that again. Did you dismantle the crew, Brandon? What are you talking about? Did you dismantle the crew? You piece of shit. You bring that. <laughs> you bring that crew back. You fucking. You fuckhead. <laughs> Watch yeah. your mouth, Jesus! Bring it back, bitch! Yeah, thumbs up for cool dude or saying the f word. Uh, yeah, <laughs> excellent, excellent advice, fellas. Uh, keep up the good work. Well, thank you, Cliff. No, we come on here and we screw around. It, you know what I mean? This is what you do on a live show. You can screw around and say whatever you. You know what I mean? Like just mm -hmm. not worry about it. <laughs> oh, and I wanted to bring up about the Hunger Games, uh, the Blu-ray that came out. That's which is a Walmart exclusive. I've, I haven't seen the movie yet. All I've seen is the first one. But Walmart has a double-pack Blu-ray set. 
with, uh, of course, one and two on it, both Hunger Games movies. But be careful when you buy it, because if you're a fan of those movies and you want your special features, they're not going to be in that, that double pack set. This is what I uh, read on the back of the box that comes with no special features. So if you guys want to get the special features, get the movies separately on their own discs and stuff. Someone said, though, on Facebook, it's a question, what do we think about the new Friday the 13th movie being a found footage movie? I think I made a video talking about this. If it's done well, I'll be okay with it. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, it, it, it just kind of irks me a little bit just hearing that. Urkel. You know, irks, like pisses me off, whatever. No, no I know. Irks me, buddy. <laughs> no, I don't know. I think, I, I don't. I don't know. It's going to be really weird how they how it's going to happen. I don't know. I really wonder how it's going to happen. Yeah. It says, uh, are you guys excited or curious about the new uh, Godzilla movie? No, I actually, like, you know, there's very few big mainstream things that I want to watch. That That's one wonderful. to me looks pretty good. Like, I don't know. I, I always have liked Godzilla. I remember, like, as a, I haven't really watched it as much now, but I remember as a kid, I used to like that one, Son of Godzilla, which I know people said was not good. Mm -hmm. But you know me, I like the crappy ones. And, like, I really liked that one with the kid Godzilla, remember? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I liked it so much. Like, every time I thought of it, I thought of Chucky for some reason. <laughs> the Chucky movie, I don't know why. Maybe it was, like, it, the voice sounded like Chucky or something. I don't know what it was. Maybe. But what do you think, what do you, uh, when do you think they're going to make the Pride of Chucky or whatever? I think that's the next one that's going to be called, right? Pride of Chucky? Right? I don't I think know. I, I think I heard uh, or post of the director Don Mancini talking uh, talking about it. I think that's what's going to be called Pride of uh, Chucky is if they do another one. Is that going to be a sequel to the the last one, or is that going to be that remake one? That one I'm not quite sure, but I'm really interested in seeing what where they take the franchise now because this la the last uh, Chucky film was actually really kind of you know cool Good. for what it was. I, I liked it. I mean, it's not amazing, but it, to me, it's better than the Cedar Chucky, even though Cedar Chucky probably had a, like a couple million dollars more budget. Mm-hmm. And I actually thought it was kind of cool that his daughter, you know, Brad Dourif's daughter, was like the star of it. It kind of made it like even cooler in a weird way, because it was like, I don't know, I, I liked it, because it it even fit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I and because you know, if you saw the movie, like there was a reason behind it, and I don't know, it worked. No, it, it really did, and I was. I was I, I can't ruin, we can't ruin it for people that didn't see it, but no. I really liked how they brought they have some people in that movie that were just kind of like, oh, that's awesome. I like how they got them in there. Mm-hmm. No, I, and that that Hunger Games one, I, I just bought it today. The I, I think mm -hmm. I accident, I think I didn't buy the steel book by mistake. I think I bought the digi book. I didn't even realize oh. at, at best. I mean, at Target they have a digi book and a steel book. Oh Jesus! But, I thought like, I thought Best Buy, I thought Best Buy had the steel book of that one. No, it looked like it was, unless I was, like, getting confused. But mm. it looked like one of them was a steel. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't looking at it right. But do you have the first one on Steelbook or something? I don't think so. Yeah. I think it's, it's, always kind of, I know, it's always kind of weird. It always kind of annoys me. Like, say if I had, say if this one came out, the first uh, Return of Nukem High came out on the Steelbook edition, and then the second one came out, but the only way you can get it is in, like, a, di like a digibook. I'm like, God damn it, make it a Steelbook. Like, I hate it. Especially if I, if I have this in a regular case, and then part two comes out in a still book, and then I'm like, oh, damn it. I don't know. It kind of annoys me a little bit. I hope the next one's in a green case as well. Oh, I know. I, I like that. To change it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's been many things in a green case except for, like, um, you know, the uh, Reanimator DVD. Oh, yeah. It's the one from back in the day. And the other one that was in a weird color case was that movie Snuff. I only bought it because of the red case. Right, and it was like I, I knew he's a piece of shit, but like I like the red case. Yeah, and whatever happened to Gabriel's girlfriend? Got a comment there. Well, I think they they usually get back to they get together, break up, and get back together. But right now, I think she's fo trying to focus on her life more right now. Like she's she has a job, and she's just, you know trying to you know earn a living, just trying to trying to trying to do her thing right now. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's what's going going on. I haven't I haven't heard from her in a while though. I think at some point she'll probably be back. You know, I mean, that, it kind of always happens like that. It's like she's gone, mm -hmm. but but you never know. Um, hey guys, what is your favorite science fiction? Movie? Some of your favorite science fiction ones. I gotta say, Event Horizon is like one of the top ones. Like that comes straight to my mind when I when I hear science fiction. That one and the Cube movies, at least the first one, Cube. I like the um, you know, the Alien, you know, like the Alien movies. You know, of course, All right, even though like. I sometimes put them in the horror section, but like those are, 
like Event Horizon is a great science fiction movie. Mm-hmm. Have you watched that? What did you say? Event Horizon. That was the first thing I said. Oh, you already said it. I wasn't paying attention. That's okay. Uh, You're too busy all up in your own head, not even paying attention to what the co-host of the show is saying. That's all right. Oh, I know. Man, I'm not paying good attention, am I? <laughs> no, that's all right. You're just uh, a little high or something. And I got some questions uh, or comments underneath my last video called Lost in Walmart I did. And some people were going, Brendan, are you high or something? I'm like, no. I'm just wandering around Walmart, just, you know, just messing around. We always, like, you know, wish someone would offer it to us, you know, if we meet them and they never do. Nope. No, it never happens. It's like I was, I, I was actually offered a beer once by Bolo, this cool wrestler guy that watches our videos. That He's, like, a, like a big wrestler. He wrestles at, mm-hmm. uh, like, I forgot, like, the YMCA's or, like, some of the boys and girls clubs and stuff. He's, like, this really big buff dude, and I see him at these conventions and stuff all the time, and he's always like, dude, you want to, I'll get you a beer next time I see you. And, like, you know, he gets me a beer. And he always invites me to his wrestling events, but I can never make it because I can't get there. No, I know. And now you're going to be out in the middle of nowhere and it's going to be, oh, shit. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. Want to answer a couple more questions before we head up out of here? And someone said, how did you build your audience on YouTube? I've been on YouTube for seven years now, and I'm just about to hit 1,000 subs. I really built my audience with DVD collection videos, taking my cue from Sean, but how did you guys do it? I don't well, know. Like, the thing is, it's a slow thing. Now. Like, right now, it's kind of hard to build your audience if you're coming on YouTube mm-hmm. now because it's hard to get your face out there now. You know, like even now, like, getting subscribers now, it's kind of it, it's kind of a slow process. It's not like do 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 like how it used to be back in the day. But what did, what did you want to say, Sean? I don't know. I think it was right when I started doing the DVD videos that kind of it is what sort of started because I think it was one of the early people to do, you know, show the whole collection that I did, like, like the first to do the collection series, you know what I mean? That yeah. the, way, the way I did it. And then people started subscribing for that. And then more people started doing collection videos. But like we were saying before, I think now, to each other, I think the people doing the collection videos are starting to come back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think it's starting Cause like, to... Because yeah, cause back in the day, like 2006 or early 2007, when me and you were like, Starting to do it like hard, you know, hardcore and things. There's like all these different people, a plethora, as you will, of, uh, as you would say, of a lot of like, people out there that were doing them. And then it was slowly died off. Like people started giving up and like, ah, screw it, I don't want to do this anymore. But now it seems like all, a lot of people are coming, like the Cinema Woman, and like all these other like you know, uh, people like uh, Wasting Money Ones and all these other cool people doing stuff. There's a handful of people that were doing videos that I wish kept doing them. You know. Mhm. It's kind of it's kind of messed up when I follow people that I end up start to really like and they just they just disappear. No, it's 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 too bad that like sometimes some people you all right? Yeah, just have a stroke. All right. Sometimes people, you know, kind of go and I don't know, it's too, it's a shame. Yeah. Someone's asking you about your new job. I, I work at the, I work at a serious call center. But I can't tell you what number or where because I can get in trouble. You're gonna get yourself fired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh, buddy. I'm sure for me saying that, someone will try to find it and call the number, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Draw them in the house. Wash your ass. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> we're, we're talking about singing some songs. So like you know, come on, let's sing the everybody song. Everybody. 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 Yeah. yeah. Shake Rock your body. body. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. Back streets, back. Oh, yeah. Oh, what about, you know... Wait, wait, wait. It, what about this one? Everything is awesome. Okay. No. okay. Or the one song from Getting Sarah Marcer. It's getting kind of hard to believe that things will get mental. Yeah. That one. See, like, now we got a comment here saying, God, I wish the fr- I missed the Friday Night Ritual. You see, there's people, like I said, that you get to really know and like watching I on know. YouTube, and when they disappear, it's kind of like a depressing kind of like, God damn it, what, you know, kind of thing. No, I know. It's a, it's a pain because it's, there's been so many people, and also people who have been around that, like, we just kind of discovered that make these amazing videos. Like, there's this one video of this guy, and he did videos with his mom. 
and he went around, and the, and the mom was screaming and yelling at him the whole time when they were filming. They kept in trouble for filming places. They were mm -hmm. amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's some of these yeah. people that make these amazing, weird videos that, like, if only people would see them, they they would get their own TV show. You know oh, I, mean? I know, right? You know what I mean? Like, they need. I don't know. It's like there's some of these people out there that are amazing. That, uh, like, there's a question here saying, Brendan. Uh, are you not going to be doing any more hoarding up videos uh, since you're moving? No. They're, they're still going to be happening. I just need to try to figure out where I'm going to be doing them at. <laughs> because, they're not, because they're obviously not going to be at the same exact locations and stuff. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, since you're moving, you're going to probably I'm sure, go. I'm sure, I'm sure there's Best Buys and Targets and all that shit out where I'm going. No, oh, I know. So I guess should we be done soon? And I want to talk to you about one or two things off camera. You know, oh, uh, what do you got? I, 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 I just discovered something. I want to ask, you know, see if you can, if you're noticing it too. Okay. Yeah, but right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you guys give this one a thumbs up. Also, I have a link for it in the description box as soon as this video publishes on YouTube. Check out uh, Cool Dooders' new DVD Blu-ray uh, update video, which he posted uh, like Saturday morning. Make sure you guys check it out, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, me and Sean will see you on the flip side. Later. <laughs>